Talk about capturing lightning in a bottle. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 one-hit wonder game companies. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at various game companies or individual developers who are known for one game and one game only. It doesn't really matter how many games these developers have created. If they only have one major and successful title and nothing more, then they'll be considered for the list. We will also be including franchises on this list, as the individual entries can all be grouped under the shared franchise name. Number 10, CCP Games. What is this? CCP Games were founded in 1997 in Iceland, and since then, they have been focusing on one series, EVE Online. EVE Online was launched in 2003, six years after the company was founded, and it has been its pride and joy ever since. Help our favorite recruit gain a true appreciation of the majesty before us. Various other games set within the EVE universe have been released, including Dust 514 and the virtual reality EVE Valkyrie which was arguably the Oculus Rift's most impressive looking game upon launch, which also admittedly wasn't saying that much. They have continued in the virtual reality market with games like Gunjack and Spark, but EVE Online really remains the only thing people know them for. I cannot set a waypoint to the same location twice. Number nine, Whoopi Camp. <laughs> Whoopi Camp didn't last very long, which is kind of a shame. This development company is known for the Tomba series, which includes Tomba, released in 1998, and Tomba 2, The Evil Swine Return, which was released one year later. Uh oh, this isn't enough! The series received great reviews due to its colorful world and interesting gameplay, but they sold poorly and are now technically collector's items, although you can find them on the PlayStation Network. Due to the series' poor sales, Whoopi Camp disbanded after Tomba 2, but they left us with some of the best platformers of the PlayStation era. Number 8. King Juicy. There is big money in the Facebook and mobile gaming market, and King has taken full advantage of that. Their early Facebook games, like Bubble Witch Saga and Pyramid Solitaire Saga, were fairly successful, but they really struck gold with a little game called Candy Crush Saga. Sweet. The game was released in April 2012, and it was an immediate hit, quickly surpassing Farmville 2 as Facebook's most successful game. King has developed numerous games since Candy Crush Saga's release, including Farm Heroes Saga and Shuffle Cats, but none of them have come close to matching the phenomenon that is Candy Crush. Number 7. Cave Dog Entertainment Cave Dog Entertainment began as a division of Humongous Entertainment, a company devoted to making children's games. Their first project was Total Annihilation, a hugely influential and respected real-time strategy which was considered to be one of the best games of the year. It was unquestionably a triumph, but despite its enormous success, the game's creator left the company soon after its release. In 1999, its sequel, Total Annihilation Kingdoms, was released, but it was considered a disappointment due to its move towards fantasy. The company filed for bankruptcy and shut its doors in the year 2000, leaving a tremendously influential title as its only claim to fame. Number 6. Real-Time Worlds Crackdown was one of the best open-world games released on the 7th generation of consoles, and I will fight you over that. It was really fun. Anyway, this was due to its fun setting, spectacular graphics, and its integration of fun co-op mechanics. It also sold really well, and is now remembered as a cult classic on the Xbox 360. And that's about all that Real Time Worlds has done. They released another game called APB All Points Bulletin, but that was a massive disappointment, which significantly hurt the company. They were placed into administration only two months after APB's release, and the company had closed its doors by the end of the year. Number 5. Phil Fish This is actually a person and not a company. Fez was not only Phil Fish's first indie game, but it looks like it's going to be his only indie game. Fish quit his day job to focus on the development of Fez, a tumultuous process which was infamously detailed in the documentary Indie Game The Movie. If this, if this fails, like, I don't think I, uh, I'll work in games again. The game was finally released in 2012 and had sold 1 million copies by the end of the next year. However, before its sequel could be released, Fish took to Twitter to condemn the gaming industry and announce his departure from it. 
Since his, quote, departure, he has worked with the experimental group Kokoromi to develop Super Hyper Cube, a puzzle game released for PlayStation VR. We are sure you've heard of it. Number 4. Rovio Entertainment The Angry Birds series is undoubtedly one of the most popular mobile game franchises in history. The first game was released in 2009 to instant success, and as of July 2015, the game has collectively amassed over 3 billion downloads. It has also launched numerous pieces of merchandise, a televised cartoon, and a full-length movie, all of which saw success. While the franchise has undoubtedly kept Robio happy, they have created other games throughout the years, including Nibblers, Love Rocks, and Battle Bay. However, no matter how many games they release, they will likely never capture the same amount of acclaim and attention that they received with Angry Birds. Number 3. Alexei Pajitnov While you might not know the name, you certainly know the game. It's a little one called Tetris. Pajitnov developed the game while working at the Russian Academy of Sciences, and it quickly spread throughout Russia and Hungary before appearing in the United States in 1987. He created a Tetris sequel called Weltris, which was released in 1989, before moving to the United States and working for Microsoft. While there, he developed numerous other games, including Pandora's Box and Hexic. And while that game receives some attention, we think it's safe to say by now that Tetris will forever be Pajitnov's claim to fame. Number 2. Team Bondi You need many things for a conviction, young folks. It must really sting to change the face of gaming forever and then immediately shut your doors. Team Bondi has a single game to their name, L.A. Noir. Cole Phelps, LAPD. I understand you're a friend of Adrian Black. L.A. Noir was a huge critical success, mostly due to its amazing and revolutionary facial technology. The game was released in May 2011, but only one month later, accusations of Bondi's terrible working conditions started to surface, while others argued that the game's publisher, Rockstar Games, played a large role in its development. The company failed to pick up another project due to the resulting backlash, and Bondi was placed on administration in August. I never tried to hurt anyone. I just needed to get away from L.A. Number 1. Mojang I don't know, would you guys consider Minecraft to be a hit? It's only the second highest selling video game of all time after all. Mojang was created by Minecraft creator Marcus Person and Jacob Porcer in 2009, and due to the immense success of Minecraft, Microsoft bought the company for $2.5 billion in 2014. Because this is the most significant sandbox you'll ever set foot in. Since then, they have served as developers and publishers of various games, including Scrolls and Cobalt, but none of them have come close to the phenomenon that is Minecraft. They might technically be a one-hit wonder, but then again, that hit is Minecraft, so I doubt they're complaining. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.